it's the internet versus PewDiePie. And E8 versus a hurricane. It's Monday the 11th of September and this is Screenplay Patch Notes. Yeah. That's my contribution. <laughs> I'm Nick. And I'm Steph, and here are the big stories from the weekend. Well, it finally happened. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has a larger standing army than Australia. Over the weekend, the game reached a concurrent player base of over 1 million people. That's still 200,000 people shy of Dota 2's all time record, but it's looking more and more achievable by the day. Stephanie, at some point, we must stop reporting on the size of this <laughs> game, but it is astronomical and it is happening so quickly. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Do we know much about Brendan Green, like, as a person? He's pretty private. Why? Because I just, I just really hope he's not a douche. You, you know don't want I mean? a notch situation. Yeah, you know, when he's just like, this game is the best, and congratulations to whoever made it, and then it turns out he's like heaps racist or something. This is totally, totally anecdotal. Which is, like, a wild thing to say, but, like, it's happened. And also, just like, watch a bit later in this episode. Um, this is totally anecdotal, but uh, uh, he, he says he's a simple man. Uh -huh. uh, I read uh, I read an interview with him a couple of weeks ago where he was like, all I need is like the internet and a bottle of wine, and he doesn't want the whole like fancy cars and stuff. He just wants to set up life for his daughter. I feel his like, daughter. I feel like Notch was a simple man until he bought a giant mansion in LA and started jumping on the Gamergate train. No, 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 no. He was a bad man hidden inside a Swedish yeah, man, okay. Norwegian right, man, well, whatever. I'm... Let's stop slandering people on the internet <laughs> and instead go, uh, yeah, it's super impressive numbers. But that's really great. If he's a lovely person, then I'm really happy for him because, I mean, the game's going great guns and I'm happy to keep playing it. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on, an indie dev may have let slip that Nintendo is working on an achievement system for the Switch. Licked Spears dev was doing an AMA on Reddit about the Switch port of the game when someone asked, does your game have online rankings? Their answer, Nintendo doesn't have official support for achievements and leaderboards like Sony or Microsoft, but we know that they're working on it. We'll see how it goes and add rankings along the way. Do they need achievements and trophies on the Switch? Is that like a thing that is necessary? I feel like it's not necessarily necessary, but it is something that the, uh, people really like. I used to really love the Gamerscore thing. I would chase those Xbox achievements and then I just grew up uh, and <laughs> like lost time. Not grew up like only children like, care about that. Now I'm mature and I don't <laughs> No, it just became a point where I, I wanted to play too much stuff and I just didn't have enough free time to be able yeah. to chase that stuff. But I do think, I think it's an important way of getting people invested in, uh, in a game's ecosystem. Like if you had the choice it's just another thing, right? Uh, if you have the choice between PlayStation 4 and Xbox, right? I go, okay, at the moment I pick PlayStation because that's kind of where all the games, like the good first party stuff mm. is coming out. So it's the one I use the most, but I love the Xbox controller. So it's like, oh, if I had a choice, I would get it on Xbox, but sort of everyone's playing on PlayStation, so that's where I go. With the Switch, it's another one of those situations where you go, okay, well, if they have a point, achievement point system or a trophy system or whatever, and that's the thing that you like doing, then if you could play the game anyway, you'll pick the Switch to build that number. I just find it really interesting because I feel like Nintendo have always been the ones who have been sort of like, what we're doing is different from everybody else yeah. and, and we don't need any of that stuff and we create our own experience and it's it's, like different from what you guys are doing. And this kind of says like, maybe there are a lot of arguments and discussions going on behind the scenes as to whether or not they should include something like that. Well, or even just the name. Can't call it uh, achievements. Yes. You can't call it trophies. What else is there? You can't call it steam cards or whatever. Whatever the hell the oh, steam achievement yeah. system is. What are they calling What are you gonna it? call it? You're gonna call it- Stars. Oh shit, that's really good. Cause that's like Mario. Steph fixed it, moving on. Hurricane Irma is bearing down on Florida and Electronic Arts are battening down the hatches. The studio, which is located outside of Orlando, is quote, taking cover during the storm and hopes to be operating as normal Tuesday America time. The company also took to their Madden Ultimate Team's Twitter account to say that they would be quote, doing their best to keep the services online during Hurricane Irma. So if your game goes down right as you're about to do a drive through the back line in the fourth down, that's probably why. Or your opponent rage quit. This is so heroic to me, and I know that I shouldn't be saying that because what's really heroic are the people that are like helping other people out yeah, of floods. Yeah, the, the whole disaster situation. And like situation. putting animals in a plane and rescuing them and all that kind of stuff. But the fact that EA is like, we'll survive this, you guys. I'm like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> are, you, are you imagining someone like, uh, and, and I don't want to make a light of this situation, but like, 
strong winds and there's just one EA employee <laughs> holding two cables together to make sure that Madden doesn't go down and they're like flapping in the wind. Like, no! Like, lightning and wind around yeah. them. <laughs> you will not beat me, Thor! <laughs> but it is nice to see that the company is taking, you know, like the safety and the employees and everything seriously to yeah, go, okay, yes. like no matter what, we're just, we're getting out of the way for a couple of days to, to yeah. make sure everyone's okay. All right, should we move on to discussion time? I feel like you should do the song. Discussion time, it's discussion time! That was a journey. <laughs> well, it's like Mariah Carey or something. Right. They just never shut up. Well, PewDiePie's done it again. He has dropped a racial slur during uh, an online stream, so that's going to be our discussion topic for today. Oh, the man can't be stopped. During a Player Unknown's Battlegrounds stream, Felix Shelberg, aka world's most subscribed YouTuber PewDiePie, used the N word in the midst of play. What a fing. Jeez, oh my god, what the Following the controversy around previous videos in which Pewds has made jokes considered to be anti Semitic, he lost his show with Disney and several other lucrative deals. This sucks! Mm. I hate that he keeps doing this and I hate that people keep defending him for it because he's just so insanely popular. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's been really strange. He had that whole Nazi thing a couple of months ago with uh, where some of his videos were, uh, you know, people were going, oh, he's got Nazi symbolism and stuff in here and he made some poor jokes. Uh, and then the Wall Street Journal did this article, which was like kind of a hit piece, but at the same time, it was, no. a, it, was a, it was a pretty shoddy takedown. Like. Yeah, but it still it still had some points in it that were like, yeah, no, that you know, fair cop. And so then he went on the defensive there, and he he was like, oh, you know, I've been taken out of context here, and blah blah blah, and and got people kind of back on his side. The really disappointing thing about this is that it's not a joke. It's not like it's not like he was trying to be edgy or something. The he literally just called someone N word. Yeah, anyway. and the defense that I've seen floating around the internet kind of all day for him was, oh, in the heat of the moment, he said something like that. Yeah. Like I can tell you, in the heat of the moment, I've never said that. Like, if you say so, if something slips out like that, it's because it's been sitting there in your brain yeah. enough that it slips out of your mouth. Like I've never said that. When I've gotten so angry, it's like, oh, I just need to say something. Yeah. I go to much tamer things than that. So it's the same as like, I don't want to say it like that. The, an F word as a slur towards a homosexual person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, and you don't say that like unless something that, hateful, as yeah. opposed to just like a swear word. Like you've picked something that has so much loaded meaning and that is cruel, and that's not generally something that most people. Uh, you know, I'm well. At least for me, that's not something that's kind of floating around in my head all the time. And so. I do, I do get that a person in his position, he's trying to maintain a sense of being as real as possible, and he doesn't want to be censored. And despite how huge he gets, he still wants to just keep his same level of humor in everything that he does. Mm. But and you know, and people in that position are like, I never asked to be a role model. So oh. gonna, do you know what I mean? Like, but if you've oh. got like millions and millions of people following you, and like a huge portion of those are kids. Like I'm sorry, but you have a responsibility whether you whether you want to or not. That's I the I never asked to be a role model is the worst excuse in the world. Like mm. athletes use it all the time. Like no one asked to be a role model. Like no one's going out there going, <clears throat> I'm gonna do this so that I, you know I make sure that children are inspired or something. You just go out there and do your job mm. and you become a role model. You have role modelness thrust upon you. You mm. do not like take it. So to come out and go, oh, you know, you shouldn't be taking me seriously. Like 57 million people follow Plus, you on YouTube. There right? are so many amazing colourful swear words that aren't offensive in that Isn't way. Isn't that the real problem? You know, like why do you have to go there? Why twat. do you have to go there? <laughs> Give it just, oh, you twat. Oh, you butthole. Oh, you, you, you Will Yates. You know, just words <laughs> that pop out of your mouth that, that are offensive. Uh, but, you know, not offensive to a group of people, just offensive right. to your ears in general. So what's interesting now is that Firewatch developer Sean Vanneman of mm. Studio Campo Santo has uh, appealed to the DMCA. So they basically deal with all of the like digital copyright stuff. Yeah, um, they give you all your strikes on YouTube when you use music you're not allowed to. Yeah, or anything yeah. from Nintendo. He's appealed to them to have all of PewDiePie's videos that contain any kind of Firewatch gameplay in them taken yeah. down. Yeah. Um, just as a stand, he's just like, I don't want to be. A, we don't want our game or our work to be associated with someone who says things like that. Which is even. I don't even know if he'll be successful. I feel like he won't. Mm. But um, it, it's a pretty strong stand to take, and it's a strong message as well. Yeah, I think it's the right thing to do, right? Like you, for people like this, in the same way that 
<clears throat> Disney dropped him, like Maker Studios dropped him mm. when, uh, with the whole Nazi thing a few months ago uh, and YouTube Red cancelled his show. Mm. Like, you need to affect people when it comes to money, like when they're at this scale. So even if, you know, Firewatch isn't the thing that makes him bread and butter, I know that the um, Firewatch devs are saying that they're going to be talking to people much bigger than them yeah. to encourage them to do the same thing, which sort of sets an example. Because I think that the scary thing is that, uh, you know, children and uh, impressionable people and people who are impressionable who are over 18 mm. are, you know, watching him in bed with their headphones in. Like, this isn't yeah. something that you know uh, that is very obvious that you can stop. Like, he makes so many videos, there's so much content out there, and these kind of things buried within these videos is, is scary to impressionable people. Do you people. think he's untouchable, though? Do you think he's just, he's at a point now where his, his scale and reach is so huge that no one can really affect his kind of overall position yeah really i would say probably yes but what you can do is doing stuff like what campo santo is doing mm. you're uh setting an example for people who want to take his place so up and comer people seeing right, oh okay. right okay if i do this then if they're going to do it to pewdiepie then they might do it to me as well and so you're setting a precedent i reckon you don't suddenly lose 57 million subscribers we've seen celebrities do way worse than what he's done and they're still you know making the next mission impossible film uh but but you know like it's for the, for the future. I'd be interested to see if he makes an apology to this though. Um, you know, after all of the Nazi stuff that happened, he uploaded quite a long video, but he was kind of just being himself. He wasn't performing as PewDiePie. And he yeah. seems like a really normal, well-adjusted kind of um, guy that was that was really upset to think that people would associate him with anti-Semitic thoughts mm. or, you know, anything like that. So he doesn't seem like the kind of person who would say something like this and just be okay with, with the, the outrage, you know, that people have yeah. toward him. So. But I guess, I guess you can- But then why kill him? Why? Like you can issue an apology, but it's whether or not you have the sort of uh, insight to be able to look at yourself and change your behavior and see the things that, like you, you can, you, he can go, oh, I didn't mean it like that and whatever. But the, if you can't look at yourself and go, okay, why did I say this? And, and how can I stop myself from having yeah. this sort of like inherent thought, then, then look, that's the real test. Really. I feel like it just puts him into a position where he feels at war with his own persona and he kind of needs to, find a resolution there, yeah. otherwise he's just gonna keep doing stuff like this and yeah. pissing 100%. people off. It is disappointing for everyone involved. Uh, but to happier things now, video games are coming out and you can play them, here's what's coming out this week. Soon play. Oh, please be careful. Ah, uh, it's fine. No, it's not. It's Monday the 11th of September and here's what you can soon play. On the 12th, Rayman Legends swings its way onto the Switch with a definitive edition of the 2013 title. It remains one of the most beautifully designed platformers out, and it's perfect for on the go, so the Switch is a no-brainer. Divinity Original Sin 2 is out on the 14th, and it's about to steal your life. Prepare for a huge amount of depth in combat, dialogue, and quests. Just by booting this thing up, you're committing hours to this sprawling tactical RPG. Things get a little sporty midweek, starting with Pro Evolution Soccer 18. Konami's football sim has been excellent these past few years, which I imagine is the only thing stopping the developer from turning it into a pachinko machine. Hopefully this year's installment is good enough to keep it safe in our consoles. Kicking balls is fun and all, but if handling them is more your style, then perhaps NBA 2K18 will pique your interest. This year's new feature is the increasingly popular story mode. This one's called Run the Neighborhood. Rival Bowler Sim NBA Live 18 drops the same day and has its own story mode called The One. Judging by the trailers alone, you're gonna have to toss a coin to know which one's the better game, so reviews are gonna be the real divide for these two. But NHL 18 doesn't care for your basketball rivalry. This year's new creative attack moves add a bit of flair to gameplay, but it's still all about those mid-round fistfights. Desperate for more Dishonor? Dishonored 2's standalone expansion, Death of the Outsider, lands on the 15th. You take on the role of assassin for hire Billy Lurk as she attempts to kill the elusive outsider. And you'll succeed if the game's title is to be believed. And finally, Nintendo's keeping the 3DS alive with Metroid Samus Returns. This is Metroid 2 rebuilt from the ground up. With some modern bells and whistles to justify Nintendo selling Samus and Metroid Amiibos in 2017. That's what you can soon play. What are your picks? Let us know in the comments. It's a good week! It's a very good week. What's your pick? Uh, my pick is Divinity Original Sin 2, mm. which, which I'm glad I'm going first because I feel like that was also going to be your pick. Oh, it's like a warm. <laughs> uh, I've been playing a bit of Path of Exile and thinking about Diablo and was just wondering about Torchlight and wondering if I should go back into one of those games. And then this comes out and I'm like, you know what? 
This is this is what I needed. As a very quick aside, I did not know that you loved these kind of like yeah. top down isometric y dungeon. Because well, they're sort always of really classic fantasy. They are, you know, they're like hardcore fantasy. Demon hunting, monster slaying, like and there's always like cool female characters with bows and stuff, and I just yeah. like the spamminess of them and all the loot. The yeah. glorious, glorious this is, loot. I, I love I I can't believe I never knew this. I had to drag you away from Path of Exiles last week several times. So uh, <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah, uh, look, that that's probably my pick too, but a very close second. Second uh, is uh, Dishonored Death of the Outsider as well. Mm. I love the Dishonored universe. I like the idea that this is a shorter, you know, I can just get a taste, kind of like the uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy yeah, situation. Yeah. Standalone DLC, so uh, I'm excited to do that as well. The prizes now, that's what I'm really excited about. Let's get into it. Do the song. It's prize time. Welcome to Prize Time. Uh, first of all, we're going to announce the winner to last week's competition um, from the TV show. Yep. And then we're going to announce a brand new competition right here. More competitions. So, you know, even if you didn't win last week or you didn't enter and that's why you didn't win, stick around because there's a new competition where you can win shit. Emma Bugs. Emma Bugs, we're talking to you. Oh, Emma, one day you win, but maybe now that I've said that you can't win, like terms and conditions where I've gone, like I've made a promise. Anyway, Emma, ignore the last 10 seconds of video you just watched. <laughs> Let's start with the runners up. Let's change it up the way that we always do it. Yeah, okay. First runner up comes in from someone who can't win uh, because uh, they won last week. And again, that's not a thing. And you it's can't just... win every week. Again, it's not fair. Again, we cannot confirm or deny that that's the case. But, but you may win again in future. We'll yeah, see. exactly. But Adrian K. McKay sent this in and it's me as some what sort of spectre. What could be more terrifying yeah. than the, size of my the hands. ghost of Nick yeah. with the uh, scissors in them ready to cut my hair. Why am I a ghost? That's the question. Because you killed me from the first time. Well, I think it's just that the fact that you are impermanent and can could be anywhere I, well, is what's so scary. You look, know, I could just be like at home brushing my teeth and then there you'd be with scissors. That's true. The <laughs> ladies have always said I am impermanent. I uh, showed, oh no, wait, I'm I showed that clip to my hairdresser, by the way, because I went last oh, really? week and he was watching over my shoulder and just would not stop <laughs> laughing. And I was like, it's an outrage. Good, <laughs> he was good, just like, <laughs> good, got the hairdressers on side. Uh, second runner up comes in from Athena Lee. Very uh, creepy. I love this one. Uh, it's very disturbing. We've got a Willem Dafoe giving you a hug. We've got the hand coming around the body is yeah. terrifying. And then the Dream Daddy love hearts and eggplants. And eggplants, yeah. But you lovely. seem, I realise the more I look at it, you're less scared I seem and more like, happy. I seem happy surprised. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a cheeky Dafoe hug. Uh, third I runner up this is uh, Davinda Yell Gamma. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it last I name I love this one because it's a referential joke. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah, it's a joke on a joke. Um, it's, I mean, it scares me. It scares me a little less though because it's semi-transparent. Yeah. When it's the normal photo, that's when it's most terrifying because right. I can see it the clearest. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, a scary shaven, I still don't understand how that's the man that we know. Young, anyway. young Miles passport photo hovering in the background. Ugh. Terrifying. Ugh. Our next runner up is Joshua Guy. A classic. Clever. A classic. Clever. Blue the blue shell. shell. It's, that's why, you know, they always want to take down the king. Mm. Want to take down the leader? Mm. Not good to be in first place. Uh, and then our final runner up was Benjamin Pierce, <laughs> who just has Miles riding a horse. Spanking the horse. Spanking that horse. And again, <laughs> the more I look at it, the more you're excited by this. <laughs> but of course, there had to be a winner, as there is every week. And this week's winner was David Durden. Yay, David. This gets you every time. I love this one because they've actually taken the exact moment that the incident occurred. They have to. I was wondering, how did they get me holding scissors? I was like, what is this shot from? And I realized it's the actual. <laughs> and it's so funny because if you go back and watch that video, which I have many times as I plot my revenge. I'll show your hairdresser. I'll show my hairdresser. Um, you can see that I'm not. I'm looking the other way and I don't even see it coming. I'm like, yeah, we're having a good time. This is fun. And then you're like, snip. The funny thing <laughs> is, and it's not funny, it's horrific, but um, uh, being completely honest, I, I was intending to get like that much <laughs> like that. And it's not your fault. You didn't move or anything. I just like, for some reason, I grabbed a chunk. And I think because I was like, oh, she's not looking, I'll do it quickly. I just went like, Ugh. And, <laughs> and as I slipped off, I think if you watch the video, you could see in my eyes this like half second where I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and just continue. Uh, but of course, it, you know, everything that's tragedy is, you know, is just comedy is tragedy plus time. So we've, we've gone to comedy now. Uh, so well done, David Durden. You won the Logitech pack. 
You're about to become a streamer. Yeah, the pro stream. That's what we use here uh, for our streams. That's what I use at home. It's a good cam. Just good don't cam. use racial slurs while you're streaming. Just that's <laughs> the one tip. That's Hot the tip. one thing Hot you shouldn't tip. do. Uh, so congratulations uh, to everyone else. Thank you for your entries. There will be a gallery of all the best ones on our Facebook page. And now let's talk about the new competition. Yes, the new competition. So George. It's a goodie. It is a goodie. St. George are encouraging you to switch banks. And so uh, they are teaming up with us for a three week giveaway of three Nintendo Switches. So you can get a Switch and 50 bucks. Uh, but it's a competition though, so you gotta work for it. You do have to work for it. Uh, but it's pretty easy work. All you need to do is give us and St. George an example of the way you've switched something up. So, you know, uh, have you switched from coffee to green tea? Have you switched from uh, having lovely hair to lovely hair, but a little bit is just a little bit shorter? Uh, and you know, that wasn't necessarily Have you your switched fault. from having no dogs to a dog? Oh, reveal! So yeah, just let us know. It could be any medium you want. You can write a poem, you can take a picture, you can make a video, you can just like post text if you're feeling boring, but we just want to know how you switch something up. Yeah, and you can submit your entry on Twitter, on Instagram. You could post it in if you want to, but it probably wouldn't get here in time, so don't do that. Yeah. Um, you just need to use a hashtag, hashtag screenplay switch. That's the most important thing. Yes, and we're going to be announcing one winner each week on Screenplay on Thursday nights. For details on how to enter, head to screenplay.7 and the St. George website for complete freedom accounts. And while we're plugging things, here's what's coming up this week. My vlog from New York, New York, live streams, first plays, and so much more. And on Screenplay on TV on Thursday night, our review of Destiny 2, Ooh. Nick's NBA 2K Tour, the St. George Dragons play FIFA, and we check out the tick. That's Thursday night, 10 p.m. on 7 Mate. And you can follow Screenplay in all these places so you don't miss a beat. Details are in the description below. Uh, that's it for the show today. We've got one of your clips to play us off. Yep. Uh, all syntax errors managed to land a cheeky, well-placed grenade by accident, by accident. in PUBG. <laughs> Thanks for sending that in syntax. If you have a cool clip you want shared on the show, then send it to us via Twitter with a video using the hashtag screenplay my clip. You can send it to at screenplay au, at nickboy or at hexsteph. Send it to us, don't send it to you. Don't send it to you, you already have it. Send it to us. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Silence. Oh no, wait, no, silence. <laughs> I thought it was like, oh shit, it got kinky fast. <laughs> Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it cold in here? Where's Damien? Look at the dog. What a dead dog. <laughs> that dog's been dead for so long.